This video is brought to you by Tactile Turn. They make fully machined pins right here in the US out of materials like brass, copper, titanium, steel, and zirconium. Tactile Turn has click pins like the movers and shakers, or bolt action pins like the glider and slider, but they also now have a bolt action knife, or BAK, that's currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. To back the Kickstarter campaign or see more about what Tactile Turn has to offer, hit the links in the description. If you purchase anything, it will help support the show. Welcome back everybody, my name is Taylor Martin, this is the Best Sam EDC, and it's time for another video, but this week there's no EDC Weekly or Complete My Carry, and that's because, well, today is my birthday, and I wanted to get this video done before my birthday, so I recorded this, edited it earlier in the week, and I wanted to do something that I haven't done since Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day was the last time that I updated my personal EDC. A lot has changed, the channel has grown a ton. I think there are twice as many views now. We're at over 4 million views, and back at Thanksgiving, I believe it was just over 2 million. So everything has just about doubled, and the amount of gear that I've received has probably quadrupled, and because of that, it's gonna make this EDC update a little more difficult. So there are other people out there who you probably watch who do EDC gear. They, people like Talon Say, Nick Shabazz, Last Line of Defense, all those guys, they do EDC stuff but they don't focus on it solely. They're doing vlogs and outdoor things or reviewing knives, and I'm more focusing on EDC. So when it comes to my personal carry, I, I just, it's kind of ironic. I don't have an EDC because I don't carry the same thing every single day. Every piece of my EDC is on a rotation. So me making this update video is kind of complex, to be completely honest. And I've had to do a lot of planning on how I'm going to go about this because there's there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to show you a couple of the EDCs, the, the carries that I've put together and that I do rotate in and out frequently. So I'm going to show you those, but I'm also going to just show you some of my absolute favorite EDC gear. The stuff that I recommend or prefer as far as EDC gear goes. So maybe I don't carry it every single day, but it's something that is constantly in rotation. So these are the things that I'm carrying now, so with all that said, let's do the damn thing. One more thing before I get started. So most of the beads in this video, other than the combat bead on the Paramilitary 2 and one of the knurled beads on the Giltek Ruck, all the hammered finished bronze beads and some of the other bronze beads are from Urban Carvers. Dustin Bean has been awesome in sending me that stuff. Also, the magnetic quick release on my keys is from Urban Carvers. And he sent me this one as well. This is the knurled aluminum version of the magnetic quick release. And this thing is awesome. It's one of my favorite pieces of gear and I'm gonna give this away. So all you have to do is comment down below with a number between zero and 1000. I will randomly select a number and whoever guesses it first or gets the closest first will win the magnetic quick release. I will send it to you in the mail. But first let's uh, let's talk about the keys because the, the toughest thing about EDC is coming up with a solid compact key situation, mainly for me because I drive a Toyota Tacoma, an, an older model which had the key and the fob separate. So you've got this big fat key, you have this remote fob that's just fat as well, and there's just no good way to carry this. And I've tried and tried and tried. But what I've ended up doing is putting the key on a split ring and then also putting the fob attached to that same split ring with just a little bit of paracord. It's kind of ugly, but it, it works. <laughs> it's, it's all I can really do. But attached to that, because I don't like the weight of all my other keys and everything hanging on the ignition when I'm driving, I have a magnetic quick release from Urban Carvers attached to that. So with that, I just pull my keys off. These are attached to my belt loop. I pull this off and this is what I use when I'm driving and then snap it on. Also on here is the Key Smart Rugged in Titanium. So this is my key organizer that I'm using. I use this one a lot because it's just really nice. It's it's lighter than the copper key bar. I bought the copper key bar knowing it was gonna be heavy, but there's just something about the Key Smart that I also really like. I like the clip on this. I like that it's not too heavy. It's longer than the key bar. The key bar is shorter and wider. Something about it being longer and narrower just makes it work a little better for me but uh, I do switch between this and the key bar and the orbit key pretty regularly just to keep things fresh. But the one that I always return to is the Key Smart Rugged in Titanium. 
And I use a Nitize s beaner to attach that to the rest of my keys, the bigger split ring here. And that's pretty compact. I think this is probably the most compact I've ever had my keys. This hangs from my belt using the Zach Tool tactical key ring holder. I actually bought this thing when I was doing the $100 budget Amazon video. And this thing for five bucks is phenomenal. I don't think it's perfect, but I don't know that there's anything in my carry that I like better than this for holding my keys on my belt. I've tried titanium ones. I've tried the brass, the, the snake bite, snake hook. I've tried a ton of different options for hanging your keys and dangling them from belt loops and from your belt in your pocket. I've done everything. I've tried so many different things and this one works the best, but I just bought a new belt and it is eating up the belt. The rough edges on this are just tearing up a leather belt. So this isn't perfect, but it is about as close as you can get and it's only five bucks. So this comes with a high recommendation from me. So next up we got pocket tools. I do rotate pocket tools pretty frequently, but for the last several weeks, I've only been carrying these. I've been switching back and forth between these two pry tools. And I always, always, always carry the bit vault. But first we have this right here, which is the Coke Tools Duo X. This was the prototype he sent me for the feature that I did a few weeks ago. I love this thing, but this is a really great fidget toy. I put it on my finger and I just spin it. And I just spin and spin and spin. Uh, I've pried things with it. I've used it as a bottle opener. It's just kind of cool to have. And that's mainly, I just use it mainly as a fidget toy. And I like showing support for Coke Tools. He's a cool guy. So that one stays in there. That is the Duo X from Coke Tools. But the other one here, you may not know this one because it's not available. It's a prototype and I believe, he hasn't posted it now because today is Wednesday, but by the time this video goes live, I think he will have posted information about the pre-order for this. So this is called the Spry Bar and it's from CJ Glass and Heart Designs. And it's just a titanium pry tool with a bottle opener. It's not overdone, it's not overbuilt or overdesigned. It's just simple. I like the design and again, it's got a fidget factor, that little ring, I put this on my finger and I sit there and do this while I'm typing at my computer and working on videos. I just sit here and spin it and then I'll go to typing and then I spin it some more. The dude is just getting started and I think I think he's got a bright future in making and designing pry tools and different types of tools. If you are interested in these, go over to his Instagram. It will be linked down below and I believe by the time this video goes up, he will have pre-order information up and when Carry Commission launches, these will be available on Carry Commission. Just an update for you guys. Carry Commission is still happening. I've not forgotten about it. I've not changed my mind. It's still happening. I just decided to put it off a little bit because the baby is supposed to be here any day now. The due date is within a week and I don't want to start a store and then immediately put it on hiatus because I'm too busy dealing with the baby. So I'm taking a couple of weeks off when the baby arrives. And after that, I'm hitting the ground running, trying to get Carry Commission out and launched. I want merch. I want all this stuff available to you guys, including these, the best MEDC Giltech Rucks. They will be available on the store. I just received them. I have 100 of them available to me for the launch of Carry Commission. So excited to get that out there for you guys. And then we have this. This is the Bit Vault. I did the video on them when they, uh, actually before they launched. I went down to Greenville, South Carolina and hung out with these dudes and played with these before they came out. And I keep this thing in my pocket every day. One, I keep medicine in here. I have four ibuprofen and I usually have four allergy pills uh, Zyrtec because it is horrible. The pollen this year is awful. I've left the house a few times without taking a Zyrtec and this has saved the day. If I don't have my allergy medicine before I leave the house, I can't function. My eyes start itching and watering. My nose is running. I'm sneezing. I cannot function as a human being without my allergy meds. So I like to have a few spares available to me in my pocket. So I put them in there. But I have thousands of these plastic bags from a failed business from a few years ago. So I always put just random little odds and ends in these. And uh, I carry mints in them sometimes, which also probably does not look too good, but uh, maybe I should find another way to carry those. But this just keeps them together and protected from the stuff I don't want my pills touching inside the bit vault. The other things I have in here, I'm not gonna pull it all out. I have a SIM card removal tool for my phone. And I also use the, the little needle that's in there for the same thing just pushing little reset buttons on stuff that you know a normal multi-tool doesn't have. Having that is great. I have a couple of toothpicks that I have to cut to size, and then I just have two bits. I have a Phillips head and a flat head that if you aren't familiar with the Bit Vault, if I can get these out of here, the one thing about the Bit Vault is that 
Stuff's kind of hard to get out of here, but if you aren't familiar with it, it also functions as a screwdriver. It has a quarter inch hex bit driver in the front and a hex bit wrench there. It is magnetic, so the bit's not gonna fall out. Uh, only problem I have with this really is the same problem I have with the bit bar from Big Idea Design, and that's that it needs an extension and you can't really fit an extension in here. Next up is watches. I've been switching back and forth between a couple of watches lately. Uh, if you couldn't tell, I really like green Zulu and NATO straps. So Spinnaker sent me this one, I think by mistake, they told me to hang on to it, but this is the Spinnaker Heel. I really like this watch a lot. So it's an automatic, the same movement as all those other Spinnakers that I've talked about, the uh, Seiko NH35. The looms on this are fantastic. The problem that I've had is just that this Zulu strap doesn't fit my wrist for some reason. One strap is, one hole is too loose, one is too tight, and I can't, I can't get it right, man. The other is the watch that I purchased as a Christmas present to myself. I got a lot of cash for Christmas, so I ended up buying the Seiko SUN065. I've been keeping this on my wrist for a long, long time. It's got like a six month runtime. So if you wear this just a couple of days every six months, it's not gonna stop on you. So you don't have to reset it every single time. I love that. I love the way it looks. It's big, bulky. Sometimes I like that look. Uh, but what I've been wearing most recently, because this came last week, week before last, is the Boulder Venture Watch and I love this watch. I want it to be the perfect watch. It's not quite perfect. It's a little small for my wrist. I've been wearing it anyway. The one thing it needs is a date window, but I will do a video on Boulder Supply Company. They sent me two watches. This one's titanium, so it's super lightweight. It's a quartz watch. It's all quartz. Some of you aren't gonna like it, especially when I talk about price for a quartz watch, but I think this is worth it. I think it's a great watch. Those are the watches that have been on my wrist lately, mostly the Boulder Venture because I because titanium, let's be real. All right, next up we have the phone, iPhone 10, still carrying the iPhone 10, but recently I received the Rhino Shield Mod NX case. I don't know what the name of this design is. They sent me a bunch of different backs. So the way this case works, you can swap out the buttons for different colors. I chose orange, and then you can also swap out the back with different designs. They sent a wood back, a marble, they sent a bunch of different versions, and they sent the solid suit cases, which are just, uh, instead of being able to swap out the back, it's it's a solid suit, so it's just whatever comes on the back. They sent me a couple of different versions of that, and you can also swap out the buttons on that. The thing about these cases is that they come or are compatible with, they don't come with, they are compatible with Rhino Shields add-on lenses. This is a wide angle lens, but they also have a macro lens. You just screw off the, the wide angle and you have a macro. There's a little bayonet attachment, which this case also works with the moment lenses, but you can attach the macro lens and screw on the wide angle later if you want. I think it's great. These lenses are really great quality. I have not used this lens a ton yet, but I have used it to take some macro shots and initial impressions are pretty great. But that's really it for the stuff that doesn't rotate a ton, the stuff that's just staples in my EDC. But now let's get to the stuff that rotates in and out. This is the wallet of choice that I've been carrying for weeks and weeks since this arrived, I, it's really been hard for me to go with anything else. And you've heard me talk about it a lot recently. This is the Arc Company Boulder Wallet. And man, I love this wallet. I've talked with Mark several times. If you don't remember, Mark is the guy whose Instagram account was hacked several months ago and he lost all of his followers. He had seven, 8,000 followers. They, they got lost because his account was hacked. Somebody stole it. He had to start fresh. So we did a giveaway and a diff couple of different things. And I've helped him get back on track a little bit. We, not me, all of us have helped him get back on track, but he wanted to design a wallet that was an organizer that was also different from anything else out there. And man, he knocked it out of the park. So this has two pockets on the front and it snaps closed. You have a card holder inside and a card pocket on the back. And I put my two main used cards in the back, my two debit cards, and then I have uh, all my other stuff, my insurance card, my license, fishing license, other stuff goes inside the wallet and just a couple of scented toothpicks or flavored toothpicks. And then I also clip the TI Pocket Pro EDC pin to the side, even though there's not really a, it's not meant for it, but I think it fits really well. This has been like the core of my EDC for several, several weeks. That is the Chris Reeves Small Sabenza, but also clip the pin and the spry bar goes in the left pocket. And that's pretty much how I've been carrying this. But the other wallet, which isn't technically a wallet that I carry a lot is the Yellow Birch Outfitters Pocket Pro Modern Carry in Urban Gray. So he did a sprint run. I believe the Urban Gray is still available. He only was gonna make, I think a hundred of them. 
uh, I had to grab one, so I bought one of these. When I carry this, I tend to have a big knife in the middle, I have a full-size pen on the left side, and a small flashlight like the Rovivon or this Mech Army X3S in the small pocket, and that's just how I carry it. Of course, field notes in there, and when I'm carrying it, I keep a few stickers in here. I also said that I keep the bit extender for the bit vault in here, and I put my cards in here. All my cards, they just kind of free float in there, and this is put in my back pocket as a wallet, and when I sit down, I do take it out because it's quite big and heavy, but man, this is one of my favorite pieces of gear that I've bought. Uh, he sent me one for the video, obviously, but I liked it enough that I bought one myself, and uh, I, I love this gray and black theme. This is great, Jay's a great guy, happy to support him, but we'll come back to what I carry in this thing in a little bit, but this is, this is one of the wallets that has been in rotation pretty frequently lately. The most recent addition to my EDC one that I've been waiting to check out for a long, long time is, of course, the Travex Contour. This wallet came in just yesterday, so Travex kind of sent me a little bit of a care package to check out some of their newer stuff, and just stuff in general. They also sent the uh, Summit Wallet. I had the Summit Wallet, but they sent the leather notebook cover for it uh, and the pen, and this is actually a version of the Summit Wallet without the pin loop. So normally, the way this wallet works is the pin goes on the inside, but this was made a little smaller so the pin can't fit on the inside. But guess what? That's okay, because it just clips on the outside just like I have with this, just fine. It's not going anywhere. I'm not sure if I'm gonna carry this one a ton, but I'm happy to check it out. But really, the Contour, I think, as far as just a plain wallet goes, it's gotta be up there with like the best wallets I've ever carried. I've only had it for a day, but I can already tell you that I really, really like this wallet. I liked the element, so uh, Josh Adam, one of the guys that I featured recently actually on the EDC Weekly sent me his old Element wallet and I liked it. But this one's just a little bit of a different league. It's a big step up and it's adjustable so you can actually loosen the six torque screws and you can adjust the, the size of it. So if you need room for more cards, you can loosen this plate and slide the leather just to expand it a little bit so the cards fit better. You don't want them flopping around in there and that's why I've tightened it down on there. But you can also use a T6 and adjust this, so if you have fewer cards or whatever, you can adjust the strap so that it fits more snug. Really, really great wallet. I like this a lot. And actually, I have a coupon code for Travex. If you go there and you use the code carry on, they've engraved that in the front, which is really neat. Thank you guys. But if you use the code carry on with no spaces, it's 10% off and I get a little bit of a kickback. So good way to support a US company, US made products with a 65 year heirloom warranty. It's hard for me because I also love having this organizer and carrying everything kind of all in one. But if I'm going with just a solo wallet, going a little lighter for like a night out or whatever, I'm probably gonna be carrying the, the contour. All right, let's talk pins. I'm not gonna dawdle too much on pins because I've talked about all of these in the past and you can actually go see the videos on all of these. Tactile turn, the copper glider is the one that I kept from the video. This is a phenomenal fidget toy, but also I love the pin. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's a, I love the action on it. This thing is sick. Uh, if you wanna go check out the video, it'll be linked in one of those corners and down below. These are the other two pins I carry. Just this one, if I'm carrying the, uh, the boulder, I clip it to the boulder. This one, if I'm carrying the yellow birch, but I don't wanna do my all copper carry, I got these two pins that I switch between they're just all great, and it's hard for me to choose between these. I recommend all three. You got a bolt action, a click pin, and a twist pin. I don't care for capped pins, but these, in, the, in those three categories, are the ones I would choose. When it comes to knives, I could really talk all day about the knives that I like and the knives that I have in my collection, and I've had a lot of people request me do a full-on knife collection video, which would be a very large video, but these are the four that I carry the most. This is the newest addition to my collection, and that is the Benchmade Mini Crooked River. I was really on the fence about going with the Mini or the full-sized. I ended up going with the Mini. I did drop it, as you can see there. I was in a hurry. Alex had a fall, and we were rushing to the hospital, and this I had this in my hand, and I dropped it on the asphalt as I was getting in the truck, and kind of hurt. I only had it for like a day or two before I dropped it, but Mini Crooked River, I really like that. The action on this is pretty good but it's, it's still not quite broken in yet, so I'm getting there. Lots and lots of flicks. Of course, you guys know the PM2 with the Flytanium scales, the combat bead. This has just been a mainstay for months and months and months, basically ever since uh, Matt from EDC Alabama customized it for me. We've got the acid wash blade, bead blasted 
copper handles and I have not swapped out the clip yet, but I did make it much tighter so it stopped falling out of my pocket. So I've been carrying this in my pocket or in the yellow birch. PM2 is always gonna be in my collection, probably this one. And actually, uh, Rick from Zero Feud, if you know who Zero Feud is, Zero Feud over on Instagram, he is local to me. I learned that recently, I went over and we actually just did, did this on the fly, uh, engraved my pocket logo into the scale and I will be removing, I'll re-acid wash the blade to get rid of the pocket logo on the blade. So I just have it on the scale. Also Benchmade bug out, not much to say, super lightweight. If I'm going lightweight with like with just the contour, I'm gonna go with the Benchmade bug out. I just think it's a great combo. Love the knife and the action on it is the best of any of the Benchmades that I have. It's just, it's a really great EDC option. And of course, the Sabenza. This will also always be in my collection, a Sabenza of some sort. Of course, I bought this one used from a subscriber. I wish I had waited and bought a large, but the small has been really great. Honestly, uh, I wouldn't be able to carry it in the Boulder wallet and this one just, it fits perfectly into my collection and my titanium carry. I think it's a phenomenal knife. It's uh, a lot of people will say that, that, you know, this is like the perfect TDC knife. A lot of people overhype the Sabenza. Uh, I don't think it's the best knife ever, but I think this is a phenomenal knife. It is one of my favorites in my collection. And there's just something about this knife in particular that just feels like it wants to be used. Whereas these others, I will use them, but they don't really, I don't know what it is. It feels like a tool. I don't mind using it, abusing it. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it, but these are the four knives that are constantly rotating in and out of my collection. These I just kind of switch between at random, just day by day, just whatever I pick up. TPT slide, I carry this very frequently, just very, very frequently because this is just one of my favorite tools that's come into my possession. The TPT slide, I think it is just exquisitely designed. I, I like it more than the TPT for certain reasons. One-handed use is great. The pocket clip is an absolute must on a utility knife like this because I've almost lost this exact Giltec ruck like four times. Uh, I do still carry the ruck from time to time. I really like that it's got my logo on it and I like that I'm gonna be selling these. Uh, and Tyler is just a stand-up dude who I cannot vouch for enough. I think he's killing it. Goes out of his way to make sure that, you know, people are taken care of. To that note, he sent me this last week, which is or over the weekend this came in. This is a custom version of the Giltec Ruck. Copper on the back, marbled carbon fiber on the top. Oof, it's a version two, so you guys know I like the version two with a pry bar and all that other stuff, but marbled carbon fiber and copper. It's already patinaed, man. I've only carried it a couple of days and it's already started to look pretty old and beat up, so you know me. Love my copper. I did finally get the Maker Knife in and I got some stuff to say about the Maker Knife. I'm not carrying this in my pocket because this has flown open in my pocket about five times. I've tightened it, I've readjusted it, and tightened it, and readjusted, and it still just comes open in my pocket. So I don't know what the deal is with that, but I have the Maker Knife, and I like it. I wanna like it, it's big, probably too big for everyday carry, but this is something that if I have a workshop, I would much rather use this over you know, pretty much any other utility knife that I have. Uh, I don't know that it's super safe for everyday carry, so if I've been having this on my person for everyday carry, it goes into the middle pocket on the yellow birch. Otherwise, it's in a bag. When I'm switching back and forth between titanium and copper, I just switch back and forth between the Pioneer BWSAK and the Pioneer X BWSAK. Pioneer X, actually, I have the electrician blade on, so it doesn't have the typical can opener. Like the actual Pioneer X, I've got the electrician's blade, and that's really the only ma major customizations other than the scales and a pocket clip. That's it for knives, but now we are talking flashlights. So depending on titanium and copper carries, I do switch between these two flashlights uh, just to keep things light and minimal. I, if I'm not going out during the night, I usually just have a little flashlight on me, something that's just enough to find stuff. You know, if I drop something under a table or whatever, I can and use a flashlight to see. Rovivon Aurora A4 is my titanium preferred flashlight and the copper is the Mech Army X3S. Just interchangeably, depending on what I decide to carry that day, I will use either the copper or the titanium flashlights. If I'm going out at night and I want something a little more powerful just in case, I will bring either the Phoenix E18R, which I covered in the Phoenix video as well as, not as well, I don't carry them both. I use one or the other, the Phoenix PD25 or the Olight S2R2 baton 
And I have to just go on record and say the Olight S2R2 Baton or Baton 2, this has to be my favorite EDC flashlight. Like it's big and bulky. I don't carry it every single day, but for the most part, if I know I'm going out at night or I'm gonna be gone for a long time, this goes with me, period. I've got a charger for it in my car. I got a charger at home. This goes with me. The Olight S2R Baton 2. It's gotta be one of the best EDC flashlights ever made. But going back to these Phoenix lights, um, I do switch between this and the S1R Baton 2, but if I'm carrying the S1R Baton 2, I almost just rather prefer having the S2R Baton 2. You know, they're, they're so similar. This one's just longer and just got more power, more runtime. Why not have the bigger version? The E18R is just for me wanting to switch it up sometimes. And I think it's it's on par with the S1R2. I mean, it's just very, very similar flashlight. I got to hand it to Olight, the S2R Baton 2, easily my favorite flashlight. All I really want Olight to do with this is to make this flashlight in blasted titanium. That's it. This flashlight in blasted titanium. Biggest complaint I have about this light is that if I want to put it on the cap, on the bill, it doesn't fit. It's just a little too long for that. So not perfect, but man, it's close. It is very, very close. Oh, and when you make that titanium one Olight, just uh, for the record, let's go with a little warmer light in there. Yeah, just a little warmer. This one's really cool. I want something a little warmer. So there you have it. That is really all the gear that I carry regularly. And uh, I don't carry it all at once, obviously. Yeah, I'm rotating in and out, but like I said, it's kind of tough to just choose one set of gear when I'm constantly receiving new stuff. So now I want to show you really quickly just some examples of the carries that I throw together. So when I'm carrying these things, I pair them together based on themes or really sometimes just what I want to carry. So using the stuff I have on the tables, I'm going to show you my titanium carry, my copper carry, and my other miscellaneous carry. Obviously, I'm leaving the keys and stuff out just because that's always there. So when I'm going titanium only, I carry the Boulder wallet. I want this in, in OD green, honestly, or black, but I think I'd prefer OD green because I, I always have OD green on. My shoes are OD green. I have an OD hat. Arc Company Boulder wallet, Chris Reeve, Small Sabins 21, the Spry Bar, and the Big Idea Design TI Pocket Pro. I normally carry the TPT slide in blasted titanium. Rick from Zero Feud is borrowing that one right now. So we're gonna just lay the black one here. Actually, let's lay this one here. Just pretend that's a TPT slide in blasted titanium. I have this in my left rear pocket. Instead of wasn't gonna include keys, but this one, this one matches the theme. I have the titanium Boulder Venture watch, the Rovi Von Aurora. A4 in titanium. So this is my titanium carry. When I go copper, I tend to grab the copper BWSAK, the copper Giltec Ruck with that marble carbon fiber, the copper PM2, which goes into the middle pocket, the Mech Army X3S in copper. And really, when I'm going copper, this is the carry. And sometimes I will swap out for that Spinnaker Wreck that I did the video on that is a bronzed watch just because it kind of matches, but that's my copper carry. So if I'm going to go lighter and not have an organizer on me, this is typically along the lines of what I'll carry. I will have a TPT slide or a Giltec Ruck. I will have the bigger flashlight on me, a pin of some sort, usually this one, the Big Idea Design TI Click EDC, and a knife of some sort with a smaller wallet. So typically before I was carrying the Trabex Summit for a minimal wallet, uh, this will be my new one moving forward. It's not exactly minimal, nearly not nearly as minimal as the Summit wallet, but this one is a little more classy, I think. So that is the wallet choice and then a knife, usually the bug out or now, since I have this in my collection, the mini Crooked River. That is a, an example of a smaller, more lightweight carry of mine. So that is gonna do it for this episode. If you enjoyed it and you found it helpful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit that notification bell if you wanna be notified when I upload new videos. And if there is anything in this video that you saw that you would like to purchase or read more about, hit those links down below if you end up purchasing anything from those links, most of them are affiliate links. And if you do purchase, it gives me a little bit of a kickback, helps me continue doing these, making these videos and just pushing the channel further. So one, thank you all who have purchased through the links. There are a ton of you. That is why I'm able to do this. That is why I was able to do this with like 20,000 subscribers, which also was kind of crazy. So thank you for continuing to watch the videos and purchase things using those links. 
and now coupon codes. I'm starting to provide coupon codes that are also affiliate codes. So if you use that code, you get a discount and I get a kickback. And that is, I think the ultimate, the ultimate way to show support and for me to help you guys out. It's just a really cool setup. But also if you wanna support even further, you can go to patreon.com forward slash best EDC and be sure to follow us around the web. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at best EDC. You can find me, Taylor Martin on Twitter and Instagram at Casper Tech. And until next time, carry on.